as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Uh, my name is Timothy Gidenji. I'm from Chris New Life Church, Nairobi. Welcome to this broadcast. I believe the Lord is going to bless you in Jesus' name. And I'm teaching about uh, divine calling in God. I'm, choose, I'm speaking about how God chooses people to be able to serve him. Uh, in the kingdom of God, how he chooses us for himself to be able to serve him. Loving Father, I pray as your word is coming forth, speak to us in a special way, Lord Jesus. I pray for understanding, I pray for clarity, I pray for your special anointing of this message for your people, Father, of the nations of the world. Oh God, I pray there will be change of heart in the name of Jesus, that the message, God Almighty, and the anointing of the Spirit will break the every yoke of the devil. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yokes. I pray, God, that yokes will be broken of the minds of people. And I pray for proper utterance from your throne, Lord Jesus, as I break this bread of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, be glorified, be exalted, be given praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm speaking about divine calling. Divine calling is a calling that God calls you divinely or in a godly way to be able to do what he has called you for. You cannot be able to know and to fathom fully what God has called you for unless you're working with him. You cannot be able to be uh, to work on to work or to work on yourself, especially when it comes to the service of the kingdom of God. The Lord has to divinely call you, divinely assign you, divinely send you to a mission field, divinely send you to a specific area of service in the kingdom of God. And so in this series teachings, I'm teaching about how God calls people divinely for his purpose. Hallelujah. And uh, we saw that uh, it is God who calls us, the way he called Jeremiah, the way he called Esther, the way he called uh, the 12 apostles minus Judas who fell out, the way he called people like Apostle Paul through the vision of Christ Jesus when he was a persecutor of the church, the way he has called you and me, first of all, to the church of Jesus Christ, which is called Ecclesia. Uh, and Ecclesia means people who are called out, called out from the world. And I was saying in our previous program that God has called us out from the world. He has put us into the vine, into the vine of Israel. He has put us into himself. He has put us and integrated us into his body, not by our own merits. But because of his grace, he has chosen us. He has removed us from the kingdom of darkness. And there's a, trans a spiritual transaction that has taken place when the Lord has... Uh has called you and also he has placed us so we are being called to god number one in this point i'm sharing here is that you are being called to god how are you called to god you are called to god through christ in john chapter 14 verse 6 the word of god says and jesus answered and said i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me jesus was saying here I am the door. I am the way. If you want to know the way, to be able to enter into your calling in God and into the kingdom of God, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one can come to the Father 
except through me. Praise be to Jesus. No one can come. And he was saying also in John chapter 15, verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is without, and they, are, and they gather them and throw them into the, into the fire and they are abound. So, for you to be able to co-work with the Lord Jesus, for you to be able to work with the Lord, especially in high level capacity of the ministry, it will require you to be in him, to abide in him. It will depend where you are abiding. It will depend you are abiding where. Are you abiding in him? In the book of Psalms 91 verses 1, the Bible says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God will, will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the secret place. A secret place is a place whereby you are spending time with the Lord alone with him, you are spending time checking your heart, checking yourself, asking the Lord, search me and know me like David, and see whether there's any wicked thing in me, and remove it, and lead me into the way of everlasting. So we see here that God calls his people, first of all, into Christ. He calls us into himself. He calls us through Christ so that we can become a part of himself. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. It is such an enjoyable thing to know that I'm called to become a part of God. I'm, I'm a part of the association. I'm associated with the living God. I'm associated with him. I can co-work with him. I can cause the kingdom of God to come down on the earth. I can cause his glory to be seen in the world. Hallelujah. And even my lifestyle or my behavior, my character, my spirit, Speech, my, 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 my behavior has to be in line with his word, with his will. If I don't have a consistent lifestyle, a Christian lifestyle, even in the neighborhood, I am not going to be doing what he, I'm not, no, I'm not going to be qualified to co-worker with him. I'll not be a co-worker with the Lord. And Jesus once said that he who does not gather with me, he is scattering, with, he is, he is scattering abroad. If you are not co-workering with the Lord, it is it is good you know that you are a vessel of another master and you cannot serve two masters you are either serving the devil or serving Jesus if you have not come to the kingdom by confessing with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior if you have never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, even if you are baptized when you are a baby, even if you, you grew up in church, even if your father is a bishop or your father is an apostle, but you have never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, it is good to know you are serving your master, the devil. And the devil is the, is the father of lies. He is going to deceive you. He continues to deceive you every day. And as you continue in the deception, finally he is going to deceive you to be able to enter into hell and you're going to burn in eternal fire forever and ever. Amen. But uh, if you have come to the kingdom of God and you are a Abiding in the Lord Jesus, you are abiding in Him. It's not that one foot is in the world and another foot is in the kingdom. God has called us to abide in Him. Your prayer, my prayer is supposed to be that I want to abide in the Lord. I want to live in Him. I want to walk with Him. So we are called through, through Christ. We are also called with something called a divine drawing. It is the Lord who draws people to himself. It's such a privilege to be drawn by the conviction that I'm a sinner, that I am a, that, uh, that, uh, that I'm, a, that I'm like a sheep that is without a shepherd, that I am lost and I need a shepherd. I need a shepherd in my life. One time Jesus, uh, Isaiah prophesies in the book of Isaiah chapter 50, he says that everybody has gone in their own way. Everybody has gone astray in their own way. And you can be sure if you don't have a shepherd upon your life as a human being, you don't have a God who is guiding you, leading you, instructing your life. You're going to have a, you have a problem with God. You're also going to have a problem with your neighbor. You're going to have a problem with your brother and your sister to the left and to the right. 
Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. And when you have a problem with your brother, with your sister, on the left and on the right, that is what it, uh, that is, the result of that will be chaos starting from home, going to the community, and then going all over the world. That's why the world is, is such a big, big problem. Because people have not gotten, the, uh, have not associated themselves with their maker. They have not connected with God. They have a problem with God. They have a problem in obeying him. Him. And when they have a problem with God, they are going to have a problem with their neighbor on the right and on the left. And then the world, the result is that the world is in serious and in total chaos. Hallelujah. But God draws people to himself. The Bible says, when you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart as in rebellion, like a, rebe like a rebellious person. Do not harden your heart when you hear the voice of the Lord, the voice of the, of the trumpet. When you hear the Spirit of God, the breath of God, he breathed in you when you are born, when he created you in your mother's womb, and he breathed breath in you, you became a living soul. You began growing and growing in the womb as a baby, and you began growing at some point in the course of the months, the baby begins to kick in the mother's womb. And so you are growing, and the baby and the, and the, and the mother knows there's something growing within me. I can hear some movement. In fact, it's a problem uh, when a mother notices uh, a mother another a mother notices that the baby is not moving in the womb. It is a pro it's a medical problem that you need to consult a doctor urgently because the baby could be either dead or there could be another medical complication in the womb. And so, uh, uh, as the baby continues to grow because of the breath that God breathed in you, uh, when you grow up now, you carry the spirit of God within you. The spirit, the breath of the spirit of God is within you. And that spirit of God is the one that convicts you as a sinner, convicts you that I'm a sinner. I have transgressed the commandments of God. I don't follow the laws of God. I don't follow the rules of God. I am a sinner. And when you receive the conviction in your heart, through that what you call divine drawing, you're going to become a believer. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. And the same thing. Even in the ministry, even in the service of the kingdom, you must feel the divine drawing. You must feel the conviction that the Lord is calling me to join hospital missions. The Lord is calling me to go to other nations to become a missionary. The Lord is calling me to work among little children and to help them. The Lord is calling me to work in the to, to minister to the Lord in the choir, to minister in the Lord with the instrument, to learn how to play guitar, to learn how to play piano properly. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, started to show thyself approved a workman that that it needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God, the word of truth, rightly dividing the word. So, uh, when the Lord calls you, you will feel that divine drawing in a certain particular area of ministry and service for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And also, we are called by the redemption's work, the work of Calvary. The work of Calvary, uh, in the work of Calvary or in the work of the cross, is where we find our redemption. Through the work of the cross, Apostle Paul says, I die daily. And Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, let them take their cross of sacrifice. Let them obey. Let them de deny themselves and take their cross daily and follow me. Where are we following the Lord? To a life of crucifixion, to a life of purity, to a life of separation. The Bible says that he who did not know any sin became sin for us. Second Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 5 verse 21. The Bible says God made him to become sin on our behalf. Christ became sin on my behalf and even also on your behalf so that he may be saved, so that he may be redeemed. 
Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we be able to, we, we, we are called by God by the redemption's work. We read that in the book of, uh, in the book of Roma chapter, chapter 3 verses 21. And you can go all the way to chapter 4. But in verse 23 the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, all, all, all people, all people of the world, they have sinned and they have fallen short of the glory of God. We are not able to meet the standards of God, especially according to the law. The law was extremely harsh and the law of Moses could not save us. We needed, we needed God to come himself and God became a man. We needed, we needed God to come. The Bible says Jesus came with the mercy and truth. He came uh, with the full of grace and power to be able to redeem mankind. So we are able, we are called by God through the redemption work of Calvary. Hallelujah. It is through the redemption work. It is through a life of purity and holiness. It is through a life of separation, a life of brokenness before the Lord that you are able to come uh, to be called into the kingdom of God. We are also called to be reconciled to God. In the book of Ephesians chapter uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 14. The word of God speaks how we have been called by God. Hallelujah. And also in the book of Colossians 1 verses, uh, Colossians 1 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. In whom we have redemption. We have been redeemed. We have been bought back to redeem us, like to buy back that which was stolen. It, we belong to God, but the devil stole us away because of our sins, because of the sins of the first man, Adam. And who when Adam sinned, all the mankind, they, they were born in sin. We were all of us born in sin because of the sin of Adam. But the Bible says here in Colossians chapter 1 verses 14, in whom we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. We have received forgiveness. This is how we know we are called of God, divinely called into the vineyard, divinely called into the kingdom because we have been redeemed. We have been redeemed through the blood of Calvary. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. In John chapter 10, verses 9, Jesus was saying, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And I'll go in and out and find passenger. He will go in and find out passenger. Jesus was saying, I am the door. For you to be called of God, you must find the door. You must be reconciled to God. You must find salvation through Christ Jesus, which there's no other name that can be able to save us except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 2.14, for he himself is our peace. Who have made, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation or the wall of partition. He has become our peace. He took you and me, and he has reconciled us back to God. In in, in the book of Second Corinthians chapter five verse eighteen, the Bible says, "Now all things are of God, who has." reconciled us to himself through who? Through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. God was in Christ, verse 17, reconciling the whole world to himself. He was in Christ. God became man. He looked for a vessel. He looked for a vessel. God is one, but uh, he expressed himself as God the Father, God the Son, and now in this particular hour, I am preaching this message, God is expressing himself as the Holy Spirit. So, it is God in one, but expressing himself in three different ways. So, here, he expresses himself as a son. And the Bible says that uh, God was in Christ, reconciling the whole world back to himself. And Jesus became symbolically like a lamb of sacrifice. He became like a lamb. 
You see the, Isra the, the Jewish culture. In the Jewish culture, they used to sacrifice to the, uh, to the Lord, to Yahweh, the sacrifice of sheep and goats and cows, you know. Uh, but uh, that sacrifice could not be able to remove the seeds of a person permanently. They had to do those perpetual sacrifices continually. And the people who are in adultery, that's what they do. If you're worshiping idols and you're worshiping gods of the mountains and, and the gods of the hills, and, and if you're, you are accustomed to giving of sacrifices, you're going to, to give the sacrifices until you die. Because those particular sacrifices cannot be able to remove the sin. They cannot be able to remove or to bring redemption. But Jesus symbolically became like a lamb. He became like a lamb of offering. He offered himself. He became sin for you and he became sin for me so that you may be able to be saved. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. In the book of 1 Peter chapter, chapter 2 verses 25, the word of God says, For we were like sheep going astray, but, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. Hallelujah. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We were all like sheep lost lost, we had lost contact with God, we had lost contact with each other. Hallelujah. Jesus did not only come to restore peace between us and our Father in heaven, he also came to restore peace between man and his fellow man. Between woman and his fellow woman. He came to restore peace in families. He came to restore peace at home. Maybe where you are right now, you don't have peace with the people. You are not wearing the shoes of announcing the goodness of peace. You are losing peace with the people. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 12 verse 15, let, let none of you, let none of you, let none of you, uh, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that let, let, let none of you, uh, the grace of God reduces them, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that verse, that the grace of God falls short of the grace of God and a root of bitterness arise from you and it ends up troubling many people and many people become deferred because when you're bitter, you're going to tell other people how bitter you are with the other person and then that causes many people to be deferred because a root of bitterness has sprung up from your heart because of the grace of God, because of falling short of the grace of God. When the grace of God has, has, has fallen short in your life, you're going to, you can, a root of bitterness and anger can spring up within you and it is going to trouble you according to that verse. The first person it's going to trouble is you and then number two, it is going to trouble to defer other people because when you're bitter with the people, wherever you open your mouth, Jesus said, out of the mouth comes things. Whenever you open your mouth, you're going to speak about bitterness with your brother, with your sister, with your mom, with your dad. But uh, if you are a peacemaker like Jesus, if you are a peacemaker, the Lord says in Matthew 5, we are called to become peacemakers. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a peacemaker like the Lord Jesus Christ? We are called by God in this kingdom, divinely called to become peacemakers. You are a peacemaker to make sure that is peace between your brother and your sister to keep the harmony, the board of peace. Actually, Hebrews 12, 14, verse 14, it is says, pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see God. Pursue, pursue. It might not be easy. Can you imagine the Bible is telling us to pursue because sometimes it's not easy to live in the peace with everyone around you. People have fed you. I'm going to be teaching about offenses in our, in our other programs that are coming in the, in the days to come. I'll be teaching about offenses, you know. But the Bible is telling pursue peace, pursue Pursue. To pursue is to put effort. You put effort to pursue peace with your parents. Uh, go and reconcile to them. 
Go and confess how bitter you are being with them for years and years because of what happened to you when you are a little girl, a little boy. You know, go and confess that you have been bitter with them so that you may be healed. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 5 verse 16, confess your sins one to another. Go and confess that bitterness so that you may be a carrier of peace. You can be a peacemaker. If you are not a peacemaker, you are not living the peace with other people, you are going to lose so much. The grace of God cannot rest upon your life. It cannot rest on you. We are called by God divinely to become peacemakers. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray God Almighty for this audience watching this program, Father. Oh God of heaven, that you're going to help us, Father, to know we are called by you. We are called, divinely called, not only to the kingdom to become righteous and holy, but Father, we are called also, oh God, to be peacemakers. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to become peacemakers, Lord, at home. Oh God, I'm praying for the brokenhearted, oh Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray for your touch upon this heart, Lord, upon these young people, oh God, that were, that, were, that were left by their father, and they are so wounded, they are so unhappy, they are so broken, Lord, they are in a mess, they are a body uh, with the, in drugs, oh God, in alcoholism. I I pray, Lord Jesus, for your restoration and healing. In the name of Jesus, I pray that healing flow through this television broadcast, my Father. In the name of Jesus, wherever you're watching this message from across the world, I pray may you receive the power of God upon your life. May you receive the healing of God. The time is very short. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is very near. You can't afford to die with that bitterness. You'll go to hell. I'm saying if you don't forgive people, you'll go to hell. Forgive quickly. Get rid of that bitterness, the Bible says, and they're going to be healed in your life. Father, bless your people. Keep them, Lord. Watch over them. Against the powers of darkness, against the light and deceptions of the enemy, in Jesus' name. May God bless you and see you in our other programs that are coming. Hallelujah.